In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get access to the Pinterest ads API. So let's start over here. Right now we're looking at the developer platform, which you can reach at developers.pinterest.com. There are three main menu items. Uh, we have a link to the API reference, which is basically all endpoints that you can call via the API and uh, some examples for example, here's how you can create a pin. Uh, this is the endpoint that we need to call with a post request, and this is the payload, etc. The documentation is very well organized, and you can find most things fairly easily. In order to get started, uh, we will start with the docs though, and take a look at how we can create a Pinterest app and then get an access token to actually make our first API call. So we're now over at the docs and you can see that there are multiple different parts here. So we have the what's new part that lets you a little bit know about uh, new API versions or updates to the uh, current API. Uh, Pinterest is currently at the at version five uh, of its API and uh, follows uh, REST API standards. You can see when getting started, which is what we're doing today, um, there are a bunch of different steps. I'm just gonna go over here with getting access. And then in further videos, we will look at some of the different solutions like creating pins or ads, uh, reading analytics like organic pin performance, but, uh, but also account or ad performance. So in order to get started, what we need to do is we need to first understand that there are two different access tiers on Pinterest. We have trial access, as you can see over here, and then there's standard access. In our case, trial access is going to be enough because we will just show you how to use the platform and we don't actually want to create any pins or ads uh, right now. As you can see, writing ads is actually coming soon, is not open publicly yet. This is, uh, there is an open beta that you can sign up for though. So what we'll do is we'll uh, get trial access, which will allow us to do basic analytics uh, and then basically reading all information that we want to get out of Pinterest. Uh, and then we can also create some pins, um, which uh, right now only we as the creators will be able to see. And as you can see, there is also some uh, rate limitation, which means that we cannot do as many calls with trial access. Um, so if you actually want to run this in production, either by building an application for somebody else or inside of your team or inside of your organization, you may want to start applying for standard access. In our experience at Kitchen.io, uh, this was a fairly smooth process and Pinterest is very forthcoming and very interested in helping you uh, to build an application uh, on top of their API. Cool. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get a business account. Um, so we can simply follow the trial access steps from here. Uh, of course, we need to comply with the developer guidelines, uh, but the first thing that we need to do is create a Pinterest business account. What this basically means is that you just need a regular Pinterest account a Pinterest account or Pinterest profile um, is just any Pinterest account that you can create. You can see I'm logged in right now with a kitchen.io Pinterest account. And what you can see here is that uh, this is just like any other regular Pinterest profile. So if you are personally already using Pinterest uh, to, to store some ideas or uh, to just collect uh, pins from other people, um, then this may be the place. If you're a business, you may also already have a business profile. If not, all you need to do is create your Pinterest account and then uh, convert it to a business account. And you can follow the steps on this page over here. Um, so if you go to the developer platform and getting access, you can find uh, the link to this, uh, to how to create a Pinterest business account over here. So the next thing that we need to do, assuming that we already have a business account, is go to My Apps. And so that's what I'm going to do. As you can see, we already have a, an application here, uh, the Kitchen.io app, which has standard access active. And we have some extra features like we're whitelisted to create ads uh, via the API. 
Um, as we saw before, there are some differences between trial and standard access. So in order to create a new application, we click on Connect App. There are a few different things that we need to do, and I'm just going to create a new app called the kitchen.io demo app. Of course, dot. And we can we need to add a few links, so I'm just going to add the kitchen.io and link to the privacy page that we have. This application is used to demonstrate the capabilities of the Pinterest Ads API. Perfect. So let's say we're developing the app for my organization or personal use. And what we do want to do right now is we want to uh, report. We want to be able to manage campaigns in the future and also create pins or schedule others. And the audience, um, you know, who are the people that are using this? Um, they will be advertisers, but we could also say others. We could just say just me. So the only thing that we need to do right now is we need to upload a logo. Uh, so I'm just gonna upload the logo over here. Perfect. So we have a new logo, we have the demo app, and we can now create this. Of course, we need to verify that we're not a robot. So I need to hit submit, and this is it. Um, so this is the first step in order to getting access to the Pinterest Ads API. We're now waiting for this uh, to be approved by the Pinterest API team. And once we have that, we can come back here and do our next steps. So we are still waiting to get access to the Pinterest API, but we can already go ahead with our next step. And we may use the Kitchen.io app in order to show you the full experience so we don't have to wait. First, let's go and understand scopes. I am currently in the documentation once again. Scopes are the permissions that your users have granted to your app to act on their behalf within Pinterest. Let's take a look at what scopes are available in order to read stuff. So you can see we have the boards read scope, we have the pins read scope, we have ads read, uh, catalogs read, uh, etc. You can see we have write scopes as well. And these generally allow you to create something, right? So uh, right now, what we want to be able to do is we want to get some type of analytics data from Pinterest. And we also want to be able to create some pins or maybe even create an ad in the future. So let's see if we can find a full list over here. Yes. Um, so these are pretty much all the things that we uh, want to look at. And if you are not sure what you need, uh, what type of scope you need, you can also go to the API reference. And for any uh, API endpoint, so for example, uh, let's take a look at get ad account analytics. What you can see is that the authorization scope that is uh, needed for this is the ads read scope and the rate limit category is ads analytics, which is something a little bit different. Um, so what we would need is the ads read scope. I'm just gonna go back to the scopes. So we should be fine with getting ads read scope, and then we want to have boards read, uh, pins read, and then pins write as well. So let's keep this in mind when going to the next step, which is authentication. So authentication works through a OAuth 2.0 flow. What that means is that we're essentially redirecting the user from our app uh, to a Pinterest screen where they then approve our application and uh, we then receive back a code 
and this code we can use to create an access uh, token and this access token we can then use to make API calls on the user's behalf. So let's just simply follow along this guide. Uh, it says start the OAuth flow. Here is what we need to do. We need to send users to an OAuth page that looks a little bit like this. Um, you can see we have the client ID, we have a redirect URI, we have a response type, which should always be code, and then we have the scope that we just looked at. And then optionally, we can pass in a state. This is something that we will ignore for now. Um, so let's op uh, copy this uh, part over here. And I'm just going to open a new tab because this is essentially how we will uh, do this. Open a new tab. And so what we can see is that we need to replace, let me zoom in a little bit, we need to replace the uh, different parts of the URL. So we have a client ID, a redirect URI, uh, response type, and then a scope. And in our case, we also want to have ads read. So boards read, pins read, ads read, and then pins write as well. So this should be our scope. And then we need to have a redirect URI and a client ID. So let's go over back to our apps. Um, when you uh, click on the manage button of your app, you can see that we have an app ID and there's something called app secret, which right now is not available. And then there are some redirect URIs that you can add here. Essentially, uh, Pinterest will redirect the user after they approve the flow um, and they will send them here. Uh, as you can see, I can't add anything right now because we're not approved yet. So let's take a look at what that looks like for an approved app. So as you can see here, we have our app ID, uh, which will be the client ID. And then we have an app secret key. Uh, we have redirect links. And then you can see we have the different scopes that uh, we can ask for or that we have access to as the app. So let's use Let's create a new link over here. I'm going to call this kitchen.io and add it over here. So you can just add your homepage or something like that. That works perfectly fine. So I'm going to take this uh, part over here and add it into our redirect URI. We may run into trouble uh, because these, these elements may need to be encoded. Let's see if that turns out to be a problem, then we need to encode them. And now we need a client ID. So we could just copy the app ID and replace it over here. Cool. So this should already be it. Uh, so I'm just going to press enter and see what happens. Okay. So that worked fine. So it needs to be the exact same. Uh, URI. So what you can see now is it says kitchen.io would like to see your advertising data, uh, see public boards, see public pins and create, update or delete your pins. So this is corresponding to the different scopes that we selected here. And I'm currently logged in as kitchen.io. So the business profile or the business account that I previously set up and now I can just give access. And once I give access, you can see that we are being redirected to the kitchen.io homepage, which is the redirect URI that I had supplied. And the important part here is remembering or storing this code. So this code we will need, and I'm going to copy it into my clipboard. Okay, great. So let's go back to the authentication part. So we were we already successfully created the OAuth flow, right? So we now have a code. So we received an access code with our redirect URI. And so far, we didn't really need to do anything, we didn't need to code anything, uh, nothing really, uh, nothing really happened yet. So the crucial part now that we need to do is creating an access token. And for that, we will need to make a post request. So we need some type of software that allows us to make post requests. A browser is not going to be enough. I'm going to be using uh, Insomnia, uh, but you can also use something like Postman um, in order to do that. So let's go back over here. So here's what we need to do. We need to make a 
API request to this endpoint, to the OAuth token endpoint. So I'm just going to copy this and this down here shows you what this should look like. So we have, we need to make a post request with a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different uh, pieces of information, a bunch of different fields, and then we will we will get back an access token and a refresh token. And these access tokens they will expire usually in thirty days, uh, but we cannot refresh it uh, whenever we need to. So I'm just going to copy the this part over here and go to this request. So we need to make a request to this part, and let's call it. Uh, get access token. So now what we need to do is we need to supply two headers. We need to supply the content type header uh, and say that we are submitting a form, form data. So let's go over here. So content type is going to be this. And then we need to supply a authorization header and this is going to be a basic uh, header and we need to do a base 64 encoded string made of the client id and the client secret so let's take a look at how we can do that in a minute so we need the client id colon client secret so let's take a look at that Perfect. So I found this uh, great website called base64encode.org. So what we need to supply now is the client ID and the client secret. So let's go over to our application. So I'm going to copy the app ID and then colon and then the app secret. So I'm going to show it, but you won't be able to see it. Copy it over here and then click on encode. So now this string is safe. Uh, nobody knowing this string will be able to infer what the client ID or the client secret is. So let's copy the uh, code into our insomnia. Perfect, so now our header is ready. So now what we need to do is we need to add some form data. So what we want to have is we want to have the form URL encoded data, right? Form URL encoded data. So we want to say grant type authorization code. Grant type is equal to authorization code. Then we want to say the code is equal to the code. Let's figure this out in a second. And then we want to have the redirect URI equal to our redirect URI. So in our case, this was HTTPS, kitchen.io, and then a forward slash at the end. And so let's copy over the code from here. And that should be it. So let's hit request and see if it works. So if everything worked well, we can see now that we got an access token up here, a refresh token, then we have an expiry time. So this should be roughly 30 days. And then we can also see the scope of this access token that we can use. So perfect. So all we need to do right now is save this access token. And with it, we can now make our first actual API request.